Welcome back to our series on introductory statistics. I'm Mark Ledbetter. This is lecture video 19, part D. We're in chapter 5, section 2, and this is part 4 of the series for chapter 5. So last time we discussed um, independent and dependent events. And we said that independent events, um, their occurrence does not affect the probability that the other event will occur. So after one event occurs, the probability that the other event occurs is not changed. Whereas for dependent events, we uh, did an example of this where we drew the marbles out of the jar without replacement, and we saw that after uh, one event occurred, it changed the probability of the other event, and so those were dependent events. And this led us to the need for um, something called conditional probability. Here's our example from last time, our definitions. So now we're going to talk about something called conditional probability. And I find that students um, have trouble with this concept a little bit. So I have written out in detail how to read uh, this, and we're going to go over several examples so that it's clear. So we want the probability that event A occurs after event B has already occurred. Many times the uh, technical term is given. So um, we want the probability of A given that event B has occurred. Okay, so here's the notation. So we have the probability of event A given event B. So, or another way to say it is here. So this capital P is our probability function, and so we read it as the probability of, and then event A occurring, that's how we read the A. And then given that, or after event B has already occurred. Okay? So this is very important that we are only interested in the case where event B has occurred. We are only interested in the case where event B has occurred or it did occur. We don't have to worry about whether or not B occurred. It did occur. And that's real important to get through your mind. Because if you don't do that, then you're going to overthink this and confuse yourself and say, well, what about if B doesn't occur? And that's not even um, under consideration here. When we say given that B has occurred, that's the only thing we're interested in. Event B has occurred now. What's the probability of event A? I also want to point out some uh, things about this. So when we had this, we read that as the probability of event A occurring. Now, we are saying the probability of event A occurring. So the, so the first letter is the event we are looking for the probability of. So let me clean this up a little bit so I have some room. And so what I'm saying is that this, this is the probability, the probability of A. So the first letter is the event that we want the probability of. So this is the first letter is also the second event to occur.
and B was the first event to occur. So it could be a little confusing to you that we're putting the event that has not occurred yet first and the event that did occur second. But here's the thing. We're, we want to take the probability of the first event we encounter after the function. And so that makes sense. This is the probability of A, but it's under the condition that event B has already occurred. So event B is a constant in this case. You can It's not really a constant, but you can think of it as a constant that it has occurred. There's no more randomness to it. It did occur. There's no more uncertainty. So it's, it's like a fixed event, an event that has occurred. And we want the probability of A. So let's look at our marble example. Remember that we had 10 marbles total. Three green, two red, five blue. Now, if we select a blue marble and we keep it, what is then the probability of selecting a red marble? So this is what we're looking for. We're looking for the probability of a red marble after a blue marble has been selected and kept. Okay, so in this case, we can use logic to find the conditional probability. Now, for the first draw, we're saying that a blue marble, so B, and that probability is simply 5 over 10. Now, after that blue marble has been drawn, we only have 9 marbles total left. But we didn't select a red marble, so we still have 2 red marbles available. Notice that this is the probability of red given blue. So that is two ninths. Okay. So this second probability is a conditional probability. Okay. And here's where students get um, confused or sloppy. I'm not sure which. But you have to answer the question that's being asked. And the question being asked here was what is the conditional probability of a red marble after a blue marble has been selected? And so it was two ninths. But if I said or asked the question, what is the probability of getting a blue and then a red? Then we're going to use the multiplication rule again. But we need that conditional probability notation. So we have the probability that B occurred times the probability that red occurs after B has already occurred. And so the probability of B and red is equal to the product of these two, which is going to equal 10 over 90. And many times, students will give me the 10 over 90 when I've asked for the conditional probability. So please make sure you don't do that. So the probability of B, again, is going to be 5 over 10. And the probability of red given blue is going to be 2 over 9. And you multiply the numerators, get 10. Multiply the denominators, get 90. This is the probability of B and R. Now, before we go anywhere further, um, remember that when we did our selection, here's our, yes, here's our results. So this was uh, B and then R. Let me change color. So this was B and then R. Let's look at R and then B. And you'll see that the probability of red and then blue 
is the same as the probability of blue and then red. And that was the same thing that we saw when we did uh, sampling with replacement or with independent events, that the order in which you obtain the two marbles or the order in which the two events occurred is not going to make a difference for the probability that both of them occur or the compound prob or the probability of two compound events. So that means that what I was about to write was here is that the probability of R and B is going to equal the probability of R times the probability of B given R and the probability of R was 2 over 10, and the probability of B given R would be 5 over 9, and so it's still going to give me 10 over 90. So these are the same. So we can now say that the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of B and A. Now, this is not a proof, okay? It's just a demonstration so that you can see uh, that it is true. And it, and it works for both cases, whether you have uh, independent or dependent events. And this brings us to the general multiplication rule. And so that general multiplication rule is that the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B given a has already occurred. Oh, yeah. So um, I can also write it as the probability of B times the probability of A after B has already occurred. So it's still the probability of A times the probability of B or the probability of B times the probability of A. Okay. So we're still multiplying those probabilities uh, with each other. But depending on which one occurs first, um, that determines uh, which the other event, it determines that the other event will be dependent, it will be conditioned on the first event. So A occurs here first, so it's already occurred, and then B occurs. Here, B occurs first, and so since it has already occurred, we're looking for A, and we multiply that. Okay, so that's the general multiplication rule. Now, uh, and we've gone through that. Let's talk about um, A and B when they are independent of each other. Well, when they're independent of each other, we're saying that um, just because B has occurred, it, even though B has occurred, it doesn't change the probability of A. Probability of A is still just the probability of A, even before B occurs. So these are equal to each other when A and B are independent. Likewise, the probability of B given A if A and B are independent, then the, the occurrence of A didn't change the probability of B. It's still just the probability of B. And so what we can do in our multiplication rule is where we have these conditional probabilities here, we can substitute in their probabilities, uh, original probabilities, because they're the same. And so... Um, for the independent event, we have the probability of A and B is just equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. Or you could write it in reverse order, the probability of B times the probability of A, which is also equal to the probability of B and A. Right? Okay. So that's, this is a special case, as I mentioned earlier. So in the next video, we'll pick up here and we will go over the formulas for the conditional probabilities. There is a formula, a way to get it um, in certain cases.
So please make sure you update your formula sheet. And again, remember you can put whatever you need on there so that you know how to use the formulas and that you can remember. If you have questions about the course content, please ask. I am happy to help you. Also, please take care of yourself and stay safe so that we can see you here next time.